All right, so lecture 5.1, superposition, derivative, and integral properties of linear time invariant systems. Um, so one of the major properties that we're going to consider is superposition. Um, so from the principle of superposition, which we're here introducing, LTI system responses um, to both initial conditions and non-zero forcing can be obtained by summing the free response YFR and the force response YFO to get our, our uh, total solution, general solution, um, and if you already applied initial conditions, then your uh, um, specific solution. So this is a different way of constructing a solution, right? We've, we've previously, our algorithm went something like, um, so I'll say old. Mm, I, I don't want to say old because we're going to continue to use it, but I would say um, previous, yeah, previous technique. So the previous technique, the first step we did was find the homogeneous solution, right? And then we found the particular solution. And then we found the, uh, the general solution or total solution by summing those two, right? And then finally, we apply the initial conditions to get the specific solution. So those were our, those were our, our four steps to solve a differential equation. In uh, this superposition technique, I'll say it, I'll call it super technique, we will find the we will find the uh, free response. So notice, that, so the free response is actually a specific solution. So specific, you have to actually go through the whole process here to get a specific solution. Specific solution of, thanks, uh, specific solution of, 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 of the system uh, um, with zero forcing, right? So spe specific solution, I'll say for free response, response. And the second step is to find the specific solution Uh, for the forced response. And then the last step is to sum them to get the, the total specific solution. So um, sum for, um, I would say like total specific solution. So you have a homework problem that will take you through this process in the two different techniques, okay? And so hopefully you see that emerge, these two different techniques. And y you might think, well, okay, that's great, but like, isn't that like more work to do, the super technique? Because you have to find two specific solutions, and then you got to add them together, so it's, you know, you might as well have just done one specific solution before. True, but if you have a table of specific solutions for free responses and for forced responses for specific inputs, you can then mash them up together without having to go through and solve the differential equation yourself. So it's a shortcut to get your solution to a differential equation if you already have these things all worked out uh, beforehand. So that's, the, that's sort of the, the technique we'll use. Um, to solve a lot of these. I don't often go back to first principles and solve the differential equation directly anymore because unless it's a 
problem that I haven't seen before, because most of the solutions can be constructed from the tables of, of solutions. So yeah, it's kind of nice. But you have to trust the table. So I usually check it with software. OK, so, so that, that's one thing superposition says. That's, that's a big, important thing, and we're going to use that. Uh, but moreover, superposition says that any linear combination of inputs yields a corresponding linear combination of outputs. That is, we can find the response of the system to each input separately and then linearly combine, scale and sum, the results according to the original linear combination. That is, for inputs u1 and u2 and constants a1 and a2, a forcing function f of t equals some scaling of input u1 of t plus an another scaling of input u2 of t would yield output y of t equals a1 times, if the output from u1 was y1, then it's y1 of t, plus a2 times the output of u2, or y2, where y1 and y2 are the outputs corresponding to inputs u1 and u2. So let's draw a little picture, because I think that um, it can be a little subtle. It's, it's not that complicated, but sometimes when things are simple, it's harder to grasp them, right? <laughs> so let's, let's take a look at a, at a picture. So let's take, I'm going to draw a box that'll be our system, okay? I'm going to draw it um, I'm going to draw it three times. And this system is going to be the same system in each case. So the first time, I'm going to put in u1 as our input, and I'm going to get out y1. Okay, Put in u1, I got out y1. For the same system, so the same box, this time I'm going to put in u2. I'm going to get out y2. Okay. Now, superposition tells us that if we take a linear combination of u1 and u2 and we put it in, we're going to get out a linear combination of y1 and y2. So that, that looks like there will be a summing junction here where we'll add, I'll put in a, a, a scaling a1 times u1. So some scaled version of u1 goes in. And some scaled version of u2, so a2, u2, goes in. We sum them together, so plus, and the sum of them gets put into the system, OK? So that's our, our f of t. I'll put f there. What comes out is y. Uh, which I'll drop the functional arguments of t. And y equals a1 y1 plus a2 y2. So that's sort of a graphical representation of superposition, um, at least this aspect of superposition. So. That's actually really powerful. So the, the simplest case is uh, your linear combination of inputs is actually just, so may, say that like a2 was 0, OK? And a1 was 5. So what this would say is that if you put in, so we'll just do this little miniature example here. If you put in um, 5 times u1, You're going to get out what? 5 times y1. 5 times y1, exactly. 
So if you multiply your input by something, you could, you could go back and solve the differential equation again. Um, but, or if you know you have a linear system, you could just scale what your known solution is for the output. And that's a really nice property, and it's sort of uh, intuitive, right? So it's saying, oh, okay, essentially what happens at the output of a system is just the sum of the components we put into the system, right? Just come, whatever you put in, it doesn't matter if you put it in together or not, separately, um, the responses are gonna be the same. It's not true of nonlinear systems. So our intuition is great for this, it's uh, not so great when you uh, go to nonlinear systems. But we're mostly going to consider linear systems in this class. OK. So this powerful principle allows us to construct solutions to complex forcing functions by decomposing the problem. So if you have a, a forcing function that's like 15 different input functions all summed together, then you can solve 15 simple problems and then sum up the results. Or you could already have a table that has all of the individual uh, uh, input types solved out, and then you could just use those known solutions to construct some combination of solutions. So that's, that's the, uh, one of the most useful aspects of it from a practical standpoint. So it also allows us to make extensive use of existing solutions to common inputs, and the textbook has a table of them, and it's either chapter eight or chapter nine. The Rowland Wormley text has that. Um, so there are two more LTI system properties worth noting here. Let a system have input U1 and corresponding output Y1. If the system is then given input U2, that's the time derivative of U1, the corresponding output is just what you'd hope y2 of t is equal to the time derivative of y1 of t. So it, if you differentiate the input, you differentiate the output. This is one way to kind of remember that. And that's what you would hope, right? That's like, that's like huh. Wouldn't it be nice if this was true? And it is true for linear systems, again. Um, similarly, if the same system is then given input u3, which is the integral of u1, so we had our original input was u1, we got out y1, now we're integrating that input u1, and the output uh, y3 is just what you would hope, the integral from 0 to t of u, or not u, of y1 of tau d tau. Where we're using tau here as the dummy variable of integration. So if you integrate the input, integrate the output is the moral of that one. And these two properties are sometimes called the derivative and integral properties of LTI systems. So we just learned about superposition, which is a very important property of LTI systems, and the derivative and integral properties of LTI systems. Any questions on those? We will do an example on Friday that's going to use a bunch of these properties. Cool.